These days, every automaker under the sun is charging into electric vehicles. And that's true in the bus market, too. Improving technology is making EVs an option for the heavy workloads of public transportation. While you might think the industry giants hold all the cards, it's actually one of the smallest companies in the space that's showing the most promise, and that's Green Power Motor, a microcap maker of all electric buses poised for a breakout. To borrow a line from the band Daft Punk, Green Power Motor is making buses that are cheaper, better, faster, and stronger. Green Power Motor is the only company in North America that makes electric buses for public transit, shuttle service, tour operators, and schools. That lends the firm some major marketing possibilities in a number of sectors, and early progress is evident. Green Power has received orders from the likes of a California town overhauling its public transit system and a tour operator in British Columbia looking to go green. Most importantly, this product diversity does not come at the expense of product quality. Quite the contrary. Green Power's buses use a so-called clean sheet design that maximizes the amount of interior space while boosting their range and durability. The company says its buses are the most efficient on battery capacity and they can be charged at the same power stations as passenger cars. Green Power sources its components from top-of-the-line suppliers that offer long warranties and reduce the need to hold spare parts. Add it all up, Green Power's costs become very competitive. Here's a look at how some of Green Power's buses stack up to rival alternatives. The company's buses generally seat more passengers, which boosts revenue generating opportunities. At the same time, they cost less than half that of top competitors like BYD and New Flyer on a price per seat basis. That makes them an easy sell for agencies that want to make the switch to electric vehicles but are wary of the upfront costs. Green Power Motor has been steadily racking up orders over the past several months including a number of purchases from repeat buyers. The company will soon need more manufacturing muscle to satisfy its sales book, and it's on its way to getting it. Green Power is in the midst of building a 144,000 square foot factory in the city of Porterville, California. This will allow the company to produce all of the buses on order over the next year. Chairman Fraser Atkinson joined us for an update on how construction is coming along and what the next stop is in the plan to make Green Power a market leader. Fraser, last time we talked, you said that uh, Green Power Motor had gone from startup to growth phase. And we were just talking off air just a while ago about how uh, that's being ex exemplified in, in your financing, in uh, your order book, and so on. So where does Green Power stand now in terms of your progress? Well, a year or so ago, we had uh, 10 orders in our order book. And today, uh, we've already delivered to two different customers four buses. And uh, we, our order book is now sitting with 129 buses. So made great progress with orders, deliveries, and on top of that, uh, been able to get a facility with the BMO Bank of Montreal of uh, two million US to facilitate some of the working capital requirements. So big shift from startup to now where we're into operations and uh, generating revenue. Now, as you know, the electric bus market is competitive. A lot of players out there. So, so what gives Green Power a competitive edge, do you think, especially when it comes to quality and when it comes to cost? Well, I think our competitive edge is uh, threefold. Number one, we have a clean sheet design. So that allows us to give or provide a lot of flexibility with each of the platforms that we deploy. Uh, number two, we have both a high floor and a low floor platform, which gives us the broadest range of products. And there are certain categories that we have no competition today, which is obviously great. And the third uh, aspect of our business is that uh, we, you know, we have a very modern vehicle. It's a monocoque body design. It's got best of breed components uh, with our chassis and our battery design and build. Now you're trying to tap a number of different uh, EV bus sectors. So where, where are you getting the most traction? Would it be, would it be school buses and, and where else? Well, the, the, I, th I think over the next year, our biggest uh, seller or our hot topic or product is going to be the uh, EV Star. That's a 25 foot or seven and a half meter minibus. It seats up to 20 people. It has ADA capabilities or disability for either wheelchair or mobility aids. And it really hits a sweet spot in terms of almost all sectors. Transit can use it uh, for feeder routes or micro transit services. Schools can use it instead of a larger vehicle. You've got uh, universities, airports, tourism, 
in any sector you name a, bus, a, a, a utilization of a bus, they can use our minibus. Now, Green Power has made a big commitment to California, specifically Porterville, where you've just started construction of this uh, manufacturing facility. So uh, is a big part of being in California the voucher program they have, or, or is it more than that? Well, I think we, I mean, we opened an office in Los Angeles uh, at the beginning of this year. We hired Ryan Shetterly for our head of sales, who has a lot of experience in the bus industry. And that combined with uh, the, uh, the electrification strategy being deployed by so many different em enterprises. Recently, we announced uh, a sale of our EV Star minibus to both the Port of Oakland and UC San Francisco, which is the second largest employer in San Francisco. So there's a lot of demand, uh, there's a lot of opportunity, and as you mentioned with the voucher program, all of our buses are listed uh, and are eligible for vouchers which have gone from a flat rate of $95,000 last year to where they're up to $245,000 with enhanced vouchers this year. So the money's there, the market's there, and uh, we've got the right suite of products for that market. Now, Fraser, you touched on this a little bit with, with the order book, but can you give us just, just a general update on what sales are looking like and uh, what kind of margins you're expecting and just uh, maybe a few forecasts a, few, a quarter or two out? Well, the, on, on the sales side, we have eight uh, buses that, uh, we're, that we need to complete in terms of our sales to Porterville, which brings, will bring it to a total of 10. We've just delivered two. We have another three being delivered shortly. And then the remaining five over the next uh, three, four months. We have a, a school bus going to LA Unified, which is the largest school district in California. And that'll be really a signature uh, account or customer for us. We have the Port of Oakland and, and uh, UC San Francisco that I mentioned uh, for the EV Star. And then Creative Bus Sales uh, is a relationship that we just entered into that is uh, the largest uh, national bus seller and distri distributor in the United States. And they've ordered 100 buses from us, uh, five EV Stars and 10 school buses, which kind of gives you an indication of where the mix is for our products. And of the remaining 85, the majority of those will be EV Stars, the minibus, and our school bus. So we expect to see uh, in both of those categories uh, significant growth in our order book and ultimately the deliveries. In terms of our forecasted revenue, uh, we see uh, we've, we've provided projections uh, for the, our March 31st, 2019 fiscal year of approximately $30 million U.S. of revenue and into the following year of 2020 in the 60 to $70 million range. Now, Frazier, we're looking at your stock here, and if you want to take a look there, you can obviously see the excitement among uh, investors uh, sending it higher. So would you say the markets are starting to get the story? I think in part, both the market's getting, you know, is getting a better understanding of the breadth of our story, as well as the fact that we're getting out there talking about our story. You know, there's a lot more to talk about over the last uh, six months than we had in all of 2017 combined. And, and I think the market, uh, the feedback we're getting is that, you know, the, the sort of the 100 bus order was a bit of a tipping point. People now are looking at us saying, okay, where could they take this company? Where could this grow? Right. I mean, you're looking uh, very, uh, very legitimate for sure. Now, uh, the company proposed a shareholder rights plan recently, and when you hear that, you sometimes think, oh, or is, is somebody knocking at the door? Or are, there, are there groups or entities uh, looking to, to take you out? Well, why was that brought in? What was the reason for that? That was announced in the fall of 2017. And at that time, uh, the board and management felt that our stock price was undervalued. Uh, there are very few players and remain to this day very few players in the EV bus manufacturer space. And so our concern was that you know, if somebody wants to have a discussion with us and potentially be a strategic investor, that's great. But having somebody independently take a run at our, at our company uh, that may not be in the best interest of our shareholders was something that uh, we just wanted to prevent. So really what a shareholder rights plan uh, provides is it ensures that there's an open dialogue and anybody who really is interested in green power is going to talk to the company.